I haven't made a video for a while, you probably noticed, because on April the 24th this year, my father died. Um, he, he was responsible for a number of the things in life that I'm interested in. He, it was him who introduced me to martial arts and developed um, a, a, so far, lifelong obsession. And it all started with uh, the night that he, I think my mother was out. And um, he foolishly let me sit up with him and watch a film that he'd rented on Betamax. It was uh, Enter the Dragon. And I was, I was hooked from that moment on. Um, he also introduced me to, to history and kind of spurred this, this joy of, of, of the past and the relics of the past and how they affect us today and, and all sorts. We used to visit castles together when I was a little kid. Um, he had a real thing for Cistercian abbeys um, and it was because of that love of history that I found my way into the, the study of historical European martial arts. Um, the other thing that he <laughs> he introduced me to was um was a joy of whiskey. So um yeah, this one's for you, Dad. I thought it might be a nice way to get back into things if I were to just read to you. Um, I thought it would be nice to read you the story of the first ever championship fight of all England. Uh, that between James Fig and Ned Sutton. Um, I'm going to chop and change between a couple of books to make sure you get the whole thing. And you'll have to apologise. You'll have to apologise? F***ing idiot. I'll have to apologise if there's any glare from the lights on my glasses, I don't know. There may, there may or may not be, but I literally can't see anything to read without them, so live with it, I guess. Um, so, uh, so here we go. This is a, um, a bill of challenge posted by Ned Sutton. Whereas I, Edward Sutton, pipe maker from Gravesend and a Kentish professor of the noble science of defence, having, under a sleeveless pretense, been denied a combat by and with the extolled Mr Fig, which I take to be occasioned through fear of his having that glory eclipsed by me, wherewith the eyes of all spectators have been so much dazzled. That's pretty cool smack talk, isn't it? Therefore, to make appear that the great applause which has so puffed up this hero has proceeded only from his foiling, such as are not worthy of the name of swordsman, as also that he may be without any further excuse, I do hereby dare the said Mr. Fig to meet as above and dispute with me the superiority of judgment in the sword, which may appear by cuts, etc., at all the weapons he is, or then, shall be capable of performing on the stage. Um, not the most courteous of challenge, but uh, Fig replied, um, in an equally truculent vein, I, James Fig, Oxonian professor of the said science, will not fail giving this daring Kentish champion opportunity to make good his allegations, when it is to be hoped that if he finds himself foiled, he will then change his tune and not think himself one of the number who are not worthy of the name of swordsman, as he is pleased to signify by his expression. However, as the most significant way of deciding these controversies is by action, I shall defer what I have further to act till the time above specified, when I shall take care not to deviate from my usual custom in making all such bravados sensible of their error, as also in giving all spectators entire satisfaction. Note, the doors will be opened at four and the masters will mount, mount between six and seven exactly. Um, that's taken from Aylward's English Master at Arms. Um, we'll put that aside for now and we'll jump across to Fights for the Championship, The Men and Their Times by Fred Henning. Um, 
I've read from this one a lot. Fantastic book. Um, it, he talks a lot about them. I'm not going to go into that much detail there. We'll start with um, the, the evening of the fight, because there's quite a lot to read. One moment. The entertainment had opened with some feats by the pupils of Fig, which attracted but little attention, all present being so anxious for the great event. At length the cry came out from the audience, The masters! The masters! And the two warriors stepped upon the platform amidst loud applause. Ned Sutton is the taller of the two, but there is a wide disparity in their muscular development, Fig displaying enormous biceps, while his broad shoulders... Powerful legs and thick neck make him appear a very formidable customer and a typical fighting man. They commence with the broadsword exercise, about which but a few words will suffice. Slowly and cautiously they make pass after pass, and every nerve is strained, the muscles twitching, and great beads of perspiration standing out upon their foreheads. It is rather slow work for the audience, as not a touch has been made during the first half hour. Still, the thrusting, parrying, feinting and guarding are very fine, and nowhere outside Fig's school could a better display be made. In the fifth bout, they fight fiercely and get to close quarters, and as the blades flash like lightning, the women shriek and the men become excited. Crash go their swords together, and both are broken, the champion's sword being forced back upon his arm, and he bleeds freely. This is not, however, considered a point scored to Sutton, as it was mischance. So fresh swords are brought, and the combat is renewed. In the very next bout, Fig faints, and taking his adversary completely off his guard, slashes him beautifully on the shoulder with such a delicate hand that it cuts as neatly as if done by a surgeon's lancet. It is a mere scratch in appearance, but it is sufficient to gain for the champion the first event out of the three, and Fig is proclaimed victor by the umpires amidst a tumult of applause. Half an hour's rest is given to the men when they reappear, the audience having regaled themselves with cakes, crusts of bread and ale, the latter handed round in great flagons. They face each other in by no means elegant attitudes, and to the eye of the scientific boxer of today their positions and methods would appear to be altogether wrong. It is evident from the outset that it is to be a trial of brute strength, with most unwarrantable tricks practised on both sides. Bear in mind, Henning was writing some time after the event. He turned this into a narrative from original um, descriptions. And he seems to share the, the relatively modern opinion that old styles of combat are necessarily less skilled. I don't believe that. If you've followed my videos, you'll probably know. We're going to talk a lot more about that in some other videos. I've got a few things planned. The rule sets were different, so they fought it a different way. Now I've got to find where I was. Uh, ba -ba 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 -bum. Ah, yes. Sutton, in his attempts to get at his adversary, but Fig... Ugh. I just completely missed a line out. Sutton, belonging to a rougher school, is wild and almost savage in his attempts to get at his adversary, but Fig is too wary to let him come near, and they spar for an opening for at least eight minutes. At last, the champion strikes out in the most determined manner at the pipe maker's head, but Sutton dodges the blow, and rushing in, clasps his opponent round the waist, and carrying him, regardless of the punching he's receiving in the small of his back, to where the umpires are, he deposits him at their feet. Fig rises in a well-controlled passion, and his eyes flash at the indignity, for no little jeering has been provoked. He is very determined, and with arms akimbo and head well down in the shoulders, he goes stealthily for his man, and when in distance, clutches him in a grip of iron and dashes him onto the boards upon his back with a crash. The Graves' end man is much shaken, but is allowed ample time to recover, and having done so, steps forward once more. Fig now drops the wrestling tactics and hits out boldly at the head and body, but Ned is too quick for him, and he stops and avoids beautifully, gaining more than his share of the applause. Fig gets cross and again closes and throws his man, but not so heavily as before. And when they come up for the fourth time, Sutton turns the tables, and there's the greatest excitement. Blow after blow he gets on the champion's forehead, driving him to the very edge of the stage. Then with a staggering blow in the chest, Fig is all but knocked over among the audience. 
Two or three strong men, however, save him, and pushing together, throw him forward on his hands and knees. They then take a quarter of an hour's rest. Some swells in the gallery send down a footman with a bottle of port, at that time only just introduced into this country, the combatants drinking the ruby liquid with evident relish. Who can blame them, really? On renewing, little is done in either the fifth or sixth rounds. Only it is evident that Sutton does not possess the stamina of his adversary. The fifth bout is brought to a close in an unexpected way. Ned, who has closed upon his man, tries to drag him down by the hair of his head, but his hand slips over the bald pate of the champion, the Gravesend man having forgotten that it was that worthy's habit to shave his head before entering the arena. Fig takes advantage of his mistake and, getting him on the hip, once more throws him heavily. Sutton, who is jeered and laughed at, fairly loses his temper and dashes in recklessly, while Fig, as cool as a cucumber, commences to batter away at his face and neck and then, with a terrific blow on the chest, knocks him down. Springing upon him, he pinions him down with a hand on each shoulder. "'Is it enough?' shouts Fig. Poor Ned Sutton, bruised and bleeding, with his mouth cut and nearly blinded, feebly replies, Enough indeed. You are a brave fellow and my master. And so ended the first modern prize fight on record. It will be uninteresting to tell what followed during the cudgelling match. Suffice it to say that the unfortunate Sutton had his knee broken and returned to his native town, Gravesend, a sadder and a wiser man, while the champion became more popular than ever. There are, there are a few things of note in that that I think it's, it's worth mentioning. Um, and you're probably way ahead of me if you've actually managed to get this far in the video. The first is that the rules are really interesting here. Clearly they've agreed on the rules and they're not fighting a completely no-holds-barred fight because they're having breaks and they're having individual bouts and they're stopping and they're resting. They're going off for half an hour's rest and coming back again. They're sitting down and drinking port together and then getting up and fighting again. So they've got rules and they're agreed to them and they're fighting to them, but they don't bear any relationship to the rules that we see post Broughton. The other thing that I think is quite interesting to note in there is that this is a clear example of a fighter submitting, being pinned to the floor and verbally submitting to give up the fight. And, you know, I can't remember off the top of my head what year this took place in. Let's find out because that would be a really interesting thing to, um, to see. Um, oh, so I've lost my page now. This is what happens when I'm... Um, when I do this. Oh, 1727. There you go. Found my page pretty quickly. So yeah, so we've got a, an example there from 1727 of an unarmed fight where one fighter verbally submits to give the other fighter the win, which is an interesting point. Um, I might have to, uh, we'll have to do a video on that. Like, what do you think? Do we need to do a video on submissions in fighting? Because clearly they did happen. Clearly we knew they did. We've got a lot of the more recent more recent, more recent than 1727, um, but old by our standards. The books on wrestling and jiu-jitsu that I talk about quite a lot talk about people submitting. Um, but generally, we fought to, to a pin or a fall. So it's quite interesting to see a fight that resulted in the championship of all England being unanimously awarded to Fig, ending in a verbal submission. Anyway, I'm banging on a bit, and I'm going to stop now. So, um, let me know what you think. If you'd like to hear more about them, uh, then, then do so. It would be great if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, if you could subscribe. Um, stick something in the comments. It's always nice to say hi. I always try and answer everyone. I don't always manage it, but, um, but I do try. And um, yeah, share this one around. And then, if you can, go and pour yourself a wee dram. Uh, Raise a glass to Captain Neil Arthur Martin Ostwick, who um, departed this earth and crossed the bar on April the 24th. Sleep well, Dad.